What's up, everybody? It's Lexi D. Welcome back to Something to Consider. In this episode, I wanted to explore something recent that happened in my life where I reconnected with a guy that I met a few months ago and things have unraveled pretty quickly, but I've learned. I've learned quite a bit and so I wanted to share with you all what was my thought process throughout, the things that I've learned, and hopefully give you all some things to consider if you are facing a similar situation where things don't go as you expect. So let's get started. So to give you all some context, this guy, like I mentioned, I met him a few months ago. I met him on a dating app and that can immediately send (laughs) a flurry of thoughts to your mind depending on what your perception is of dating apps. I feel like I have kind of a mixed view. I've heard things where people say only emotionally emotionally unavailable or emotionally immature men will get on dating apps. I can't speak for the opposing side because I only date men. And you know, in my experience, I feel like In general, dating app or not, the men that I've allowed into my life, the quality of those men has changed after I went to therapy. Therapy has become, and finished, finished therapy. After I finished therapy, so therapy became and has become a a milestone in my life that I refer to a lot in terms of like pre-therapy and post-therapy because there's been so many significant changes and notable changes that I've decided to make that my marker of sorts. And so, especially in my dating life, I have found that now that I'm dating post-therapy, a lot of things have shifted for me, a lot of things for the better. I'm having better experiences when things unravel. It's not such a chaotic or dramatic unravel. For so long, when things would unravel in my dating life, it felt like my entire world was crashing down. And little did I know at the time, it's because I was suffering from having an anxious attachment style. Now, since I've gone through therapy and have been absorbing a lot of content, a lot of self-help content, and just unlearning things and continuing that work, there's definitely been some significant improvements and developments in my dating life. And so even with that though, what I've also had to come to terms with is that therapy is not there to get rid of feelings. And so what I mean by that is that when I find myself in similar situations that I have found myself in the past with in dating, how I feel doesn't necessarily shift but my response and my reaction does. And that is something that, while first saying that sounds incredible and it is incredible, it's also frustrating at times. <laughs> and so to go back to my story here and to, to give further context, I met this guy on a dating app and we got off the dating app pretty quickly, I wanna say within the first week. And we had our first conversation on the phone. It was just over two hours long. So that should tell you that that was a really good conversation. It was invigorating, it was insightful, and it left me with hope, you know, at least some sort of hope towards a future conversation. I really try to ground myself in the present moment so that I'm not creating these future fantasies and getting attached to that fantasy. I have a history of doing that, and then what happens is, I put this person into that fantasy and it's almost like I'm holding my breath throughout the duration of the interaction with them, holding my breath in, in hopes that they will make that fantasy come to fruition. So there's two issues with that. One, it creates these unrealistic expectations. I don't know this person. Like I usually, I would have created that fantasy pretty quickly into knowing the person. So it's like, I don't know this person. Furthermore, they don't know that those expectations are there, right? So I've had to unlearn that creation of of fantasies and really grounding myself in the present. So I was looking forward to my next conversation with him. 
He texted me, I think within the next day or so and expressed similarly that he enjoyed our conversation as well. Now, I did share with him something that came up in the conversation that I wanted to know more about. And he said, sure, no problem. And so I was under the impression that we would continue to get to know each other, but that didn't happen. He stopped reaching out after that one text message. Hopefully this is making sense. So we had a conversation. He texted me, I believe the day after just a few words back and forth. And then he didn't text me anymore after that. I also didn't text him. Now you may be wondering, well, why didn't you reach out to him? And on the one end, I do subscribe to the belief that men are to be the pursuers. That is something that I feel like works best for me for a lot of reasons, but that's not what this episode is about. But at the same time, I do acknowledge that I still have the ability. It's not like I'm disabled from reaching out. And so I did make a conscious decision not to reach out. And that was because the thing that I was curious about with him and I wanted to know more, I felt like, listen, y'all, I I jumped to conclusions in my head. And in my mind, I was like, well, maybe he doesn't want someone who is kind of hesitating and curious about this thing that he shared. Maybe it's that he wants someone who was an, is 100% who has no kind of hesitation and with that i can respect it i can i can fully respect that so i made that decision in my head of like you know maybe this is the conclusion he came to and he just decided for his own reason not to communicate it we only had one conversation so so be it this sucks but i'm going to move on so i did i moved on and then about a week ago. Y'all remember that song about a week ago? I think it was about a week ago. <laughs> Some rap song. Um, so about a week ago, so two, two things have happened and I'm, I'm deciding how much detail I want to give because I want to give myself discretion, but I also want for you all as listeners to understand what I'm saying. So The thing that he shared with me that gave me hesitation was that he has children. They're pretty much grown. And at the same time, I don't know if I want kids. I wrestled with the idea of dating a man who has kids. And so that was the thing that I said, you know what? Maybe he has decided he only wants to deal with women who have no hesitation. And on one hand, I do think he could have expressed that to me, even if he came to that conclusion a few days later. But on the other hand, some people don't for whatever reason. And I'm not excusing that. I do think that he should have communicated. And I'm going to jump ahead a bit and then jump back. Later on, when we reconnected, he stated that that wasn't the reason at all. (laughs) Like it had nothing to do with that and nothing to do with me as to why he decided not to reach out. It had everything to do with him. And so about a week ago, a few things happened. So he and I weren't speaking. We did not, neither of us reached out to each other for a couple of months. And during that time, I started to really think about if I wanted to have kids or not. Truth be told, I'm not really 100% certain which way I want to go with that. I've never had a desire for kids in my life. It's just not something I've pictured in my future. And so as I've come closer and closer to what feels like a decision that will be best for me, I went kind of back and forth in terms of how that may affect me dating a man with kids in the future. On the one hand, because I'm leaning towards not wanting to have children of my own, and let me say this, it's not because I dislike children. It's just, I've never had a desire to have my own. And I'm the type of person who I feel like if I'm going to have kids, I want to be 100% on that decision because I understand even not having kids myself, I understand that that is a lifetime commitment. It's not like until they're 18, it is a lifetime commitment. There are still, there's still support, you know, emotional support (laughs) that I need from my parents and that they offer to me. And so because I've been leaning towards not having kids, 
I thought about how does that affect potentially dating men with kids? Is it something that is it something that I would be okay with in as much as he just has these kids and then doesn't want to have any more and we're good to go? Or is it something where I feel like I need to have that desire to have kids so that if I do get married to this person, I could be hopefully a proper stepmom. But when I made that that delineation between me not having a desire to have kids and it having nothing to do with if I like kids or not, that made me feel like, you know what? Well, maybe this could be the best case situation where I meet a man or one of one of the best case situations where I meet a man who does have kids and they're pretty much grown. So he's experienced that chapter of his life. If he doesn't want to have kids anymore, which side note, this man and I didn't talk about if he wanted more kids, we didn't get to that point. But I just was kind of playing with this as as a scenario for, you know, potentially future partners. So with this in this scenario, if I'm thinking, okay, this person already has their children, they don't want any more kids and I don't have any kids. Okay, fine. Cool. Right. So I thought about that and I was like, well, if that's the case with this guy, then maybe I could try to reopen the door. And so something else happened too. I talked to a close friend of mine and she was sharing her experience so far dating a guy who has kids. And that was something else that got me thinking more about it. Just because, you know, realistically, y'all, the age I am, early 30s, I am fully aware that it is commonplace (laughs) For men at this age to have kids and to have been divorced. So I don't necessarily write them off entirely or, or or I will say this. I have gone back and forth on whether or not to write them off entirely for some of the reasons that I've given to you all. But as a side note, I do feel like I am more open to men who have adult children because then there's less in my mind this might be a naive statement there's less likelihood of having to deal with potential friction from the the children's mother that tends to be the biggest pain point that i hear about those two things happen came to that realization had the conversation with my friend and that inspired me to reach out to this guy so i reached out to him something short and sweet in text message just like hey, you know, I really enjoyed our conversation a few months ago and I know neither one of us reached out and I'm just curious to see where your head is at. I went into this, I was still assuming that it was the kid's thing and my hesitation as to why he did not reach reach back out, as to why he decided to not connect with me any further. And so in my head, I'm thinking, okay, he's probably going to have me blocked or he's just not going to respond. And he responded pretty quickly (laughs) and he actually asked me to speak that evening. And so we spoke that evening and long story short, he gave what I felt to be a grade A apology. The only thing that could have been, could have made it an A plus was if he committed and he said he would not do the action again, but he gave a grade A apology. And this apology, what he shared to me was his rationale as to why he did not reach out. Again, it had nothing to do with the kids thing. And so I'm not going to give the details just for discretion, for his privacy, but ultimately I felt like I walked away from that apology and I felt like, okay, like I feel, I felt a bit conflicted in some of the things that he said. And we talked about it and I shared it with him but I was willing to move forward. He gave me the impression that he wanted to continue talking and that much of what had happened before came down to a timing thing. Now, depending on who's listening to this and how you're listening to this and your previous experiences, you might be getting to this point and being like, why did you reach out in the first place? Listen, y'all, I know. That was one of the lessons I learned. I won't do this again. Like God is going to have to convict me to do this again. I will not be reaching out to men who fall off again. Lesson learned here. And I say that because after we had this conversation and he gave me what felt like a great apology and y'all, hopefully you can tell from my previous episodes, I feel like I'm someone who 
it's quite grounded and I try to use the best of I try to use how do I want to say this I try to use discernment and to bring my emotions and my feelings to the table give them a voice but not let them be the centerpiece that they have been for a majority of my life especially in dating and so with all that being said I felt like the apology was genuine and at the same time I gave myself some time to process just like a day or two that was really all I needed and I intended to share with him in our next conversation that I wanted to make sure he understood that if he fell off again I would not I would not be trying to contact him again like if he fell off he needed to just stay where in whatever pit that he fell into and expect that we will never be talking again I didn't even get to that point y'all I didn't even get to the point to share that with him you want to know why he never followed up <laughs> He reached out to me after we had that phone conversation, asked me if I had some additional time to talk the next day. I shared with him I did. He didn't follow up. He didn't say anything. And now y'all may feel mixed feelings about this. And I felt mixed feelings about this, but it was only like a day. So I, this is where I try to give grace try to give grace but I'm also like use your wisdom girl use your wisdom it's there for a reason so I shoot him a text and he doesn't say anything to that he says nothing to that text message and that text message I said something like hey I was looking forward to talking to you last night what happened nothing Silence, radio silence. And do you all know I had spent time (laughs) thinking very carefully how I was going to articulate to this man my boundary of him not falling off again and what I would be doing if he decided to do that again. All for him to do it again before I even expressed the boundary. I was like, yo, this is kind of wild. So here I was feeling a bit disappointed again, feeling irritated, feeling frustrated, feeling all of these feelings, also being tempted to feel a bit dismissive of myself of like, girl, you shouldn't have even, cause listen, I know the things that may be being said in response to some of the things that I did. I... I, like everyone else, have a self-critic and she is loud at times. So there definitely was that voice that was like, see, you should have never reached out to him in the first place. You should have just left him where, where he was. Why did you even open this door? <laughs> now you sitting up here feeling disappointed over someone who you don't even really know. So we got the self-critic over here and then we have the other part of me that's just like, hold up, hold up, hold up, wait a minute. It is completely okay and healthy to feel disappointment for something that you were looking forward to. You had a connection when you felt like was a connection with this person and you were interested and curious to see how things could have developed. It is perfectly okay to feel disappointed by that. My whole world's not crashing down. My life is not stopping like that. At that point, yeah, we need to talk about what's going on. But no, I'm not feeling activated here into doing things that are maladaptive and so that become became an opportunity for me to see my growth so this is where I'm going to refer back to what I mentioned earlier about how I think about my life my dating life post therapy pre-therapy the reactions that I would have had to this the feelings I would have had to this pretty much the same But my reactions would have been reaching out a couple more times and maybe the way I was reaching out might have been passive aggressive or just straight up aggressive, passive aggressive like, oh, so we can't call people no more or aggressive straight out just like, why didn't you call me? (laughs) 
assertive is my word for the year and assertive is that in between of in between being passive and in between being aggressive and it's not passive aggressive I hope that makes sense so there's like there's I don't know how is her name what is that author's name the boundaries woman Nedra there we go she talks in her book about I guess I'm gonna call them responses to conflict I don't know if that's actually the case but that's how I've interpreted it and she talks about being passive passive aggressive being assertive and being aggressive and I chose assertive as my word for this year as a way to help me remember to pause think about what's actually going on with me and then say what I am witnessing what say the facts of what I'm witnessing and also does that make sense of saying the facts of what I'm witnessing Share the facts and then share my feelings on what I am witnessing. There we go. And so in my interactions with him, although brief, this was an opportunity for me to be assertive. This was also an opportunity. This was a challenge. Y'all, I'm sitting up here saying opportunity like I'm working, like I'm in a corporate in a corporation at the moment. If you've ever worked in corporate, you know they don't say problems, they say opportunities. No, this was a challenge, a problem, a pain point that I was having with this individual of just falling off and in turn it activating certain parts of me and then having to remember this is not how we respond this is how we want to respond and having to slow myself down. And in one way, it was very frustrating because I was like, I could have avoided this entire experience by not opening this door. (laughs) But on the other hand, it was really reaffirming to me that there has been a lot of growth and progress in the work that I've done in therapy, and also in the books I've read, the videos I've watched, the conversations I've had. And so it was bittersweet. I I walked away from that experience learning two things. One, don't ever open the door again to a guy who has fallen off. Just don't do it. It's a waste of time. And this one I feel a little bit conflicted about, but... Even though his behavior did not match his words, his words sounded nice. His his apology, I still give it a great A, even though the actions didn't fall behind it. Now, I guess maybe I'd give it an F in that sense, but if that was not in the picture, I feel like I'm contradicting myself. Here's the things that he did in his apology that I really liked. Let me see. Because I wrote this down. <laughs> I, I feel like hopefully I'm not. If I'm, the, if I'm the only person who does this, who writes down notes of things that you've observed, lessons that you've learned, hey, I guess I'm the only one. So I gave him an A because of how he apologized. And what he did was he recognized how and why there was an issue. The issue was him falling off in communication. He acknowledged another action he should have taken and he stated why he decided not to take that action. Now, A plus would have been, oh, and he also actually apologized. (laughs) An A plus would have been a commitment to not do it again and also not doing it again. (laughs) Hell, I probably would have taken his action. He probably wouldn't have even needed, how do I want to say this? He probably could have gotten an A if his actions would have followed suit. I could have gone without having to hear that he wouldn't have done it again. On the bright side, at least he fell off before my emotions got involved because y'all, y'all know we undermine this. It is so easy to undermine as someone who is not emotionally tied to a situation just how hard it can be to pull yourself out. It is something that I've actually been so afraid of that I went back I went back to therapy with the mission of 
how can I be certain (laughs) that I'm going to pull myself out of toxic situations that I'm not going to allow myself to ever be in a toxic situation again? And what it came down to was trusting myself. And what I learned about that as well and was reminded of is the importance of cultivating and, and is it nourishing? Basically spending time with yourself, cultivating and sustaining a relationship with yourself so that you are constantly staying in tune with what your needs are, what your wants are. And when there's alarm bells going off, you're addressing them, all of those kinds of things. And that is something that I am reminded will need to be done throughout the life cycle of any relationship that I have in the future. It's not work that stops all automatically when you find your person. If anything, what I'm learning is that that type of work revs up when you have somebody else in your life, because it's only when speaking for myself, it's only when I have a potential romantic prospect that I'm now triggered, that I'm now activated, (laughs) that I'm now reminded of, or I'm learning the things that I need to work on a bit. In this case, one of those things that I was reminded of is the anger, the anger piece that comes up, that, that voice of how dare he do such and such and how, how dare he sit up there and give me an apology. And then there's also the curiosity that's like, who apologizes like this and then goes off and does the behavior again? It's not like he got anything from me. Like I understand the story. I don't agree with it, but I understand the whole thing of people apologizing so that they can get something from you, but he didn't get nothing from me. So I really don't know why. (laughs) I don't know why he went through that. I also, to clarify, if this is not clear, I didn't ask for the apology. I came to him curious, like what happened? That's something else that I've learned and been affirmed in is that When you want to know why something happened and you are hurt by that thing, if you can tap into being curious and kind of putting your feelings to the side, that's where you get the data. That's where you get the facts. That's where you get the answers. And so I feel like for a fact, if I would have came at him aggressively, like, hey, You fell off two months ago. Why did you do that? And why, you know, in all of that kind of energy, I don't know that he would have responded to that. Not just him, but many people don't respond to that energy over anything. So I have learned over the years to, when I'm feeling that kind of way, to first get myself down to neutral, right? But also come at it through the lens of curiosity. People tend to be more warm to that idea. So with all that being said, I shared my lessons with y'all. Some things to consider here. Where are the areas in your life where you feel like you have grown? Consider taking some time to acknowledge that. Growth can be slow. It can be so slow that we don't notice it until... Something happens and we're like, whoa, I reacted differently. I took a different action and that felt great. Also consider thinking about those areas where you do want to see growth and potential pathways that you can take to get to the growth that you are striving towards. Growth, as we know, as is as is the case with life, is ongoing. It never ends. You turn one stone, there's another one. (laughs) And as much as someone like me with the personality type that I have would like to put a stamp (laughs) on my healing and say, done, (laughs) I am reminded that it is ongoing and that there's never going to be a time where I'm not healing something or I'm not re-healing something because that's another thing too it's it's not like I'm also that I'm going to be healed from one thing and then never have to look at that thing again sometimes I have to look at that thing several times over and I get something new from it each time 
So with all that being said, I want to thank you all for listening and I'll speak to you in my next one.